Introducing the Universal 2 Total Wrist Implant System from KMI, a revolutionary step forward in the treatment of wrist arthritis. The Universal 2 has been specifically engineered for substantial improvements over earlier generation wrist implants, including a unique articular geometry that provides good motion and immediate stability for early range of motion and return to activities. The carpal component is fixed by a central stem and two screws, which is augmented by an intercarpal fusion for solid support of the implant. The radial component is contoured at a 15 degree angle, conforming to the normal anatomy of the distal radius, providing superior balance and motion. The stems on both the carpal and radial components are offset in a volar fashion to improve wrist extension and to further reduce the risk of dislocation. Porous coating on the stems and backs of the components provides rapid osteointegration. The proper implant size is estimated preoperatively using X-ray templates. A dorsal longitudinal incision is made over the wrist in line with the third metacarpal, extending proximally from its mid-shaft. The ECU compartment is opened along its volar margin and the entire retinaculum is elevated radially to the septum between the first and second extensor compartments. The dorsal wrist capsule is raised as a distally based rectangular flap. The capsule is raised in continuity with the dorsal DRUJ capsule and the periosteum over the distal one centimeter of the radius to create a longer flap for closure over the prosthesis. If necessary, a resection of the distal ulna is performed at this time. The wrist is fully flexed to expose the joint. Synovectomies of the radiocarpal and distal radial ulnar joints are performed when needed. A minimal amount of distal radius is resected, removing only the dorsal lip and radial articular surface. Using a bone awl, a hole is made through the articular surface of the radius about 5 mm below its dorsal rim and just radial to Lister's tubercle. The hole is enlarged with a curette. The radial alignment guide rod is inserted in the hole and advanced into the medullary canal. Fluoroscopy may be used to confirm that the guide rod is centered within the canal. The radial guide bar is slid over the rod until it abuts the radius. The radial cutting guide block is mounted onto the guide bar and slid into proper position. It is positioned to guide the saw cut just beneath the articular surface, while the curved undersurface of the cutting block is held aligned with the dorsal surface of the radius, two or three 1.1 mm K wires are inserted through the holes in the cutting block and drilled into the distal radius. The K wires are cut a few millimeters above the cutting block. The position of the cutting block is checked for proper level of resection and adjusted if needed. The alignment rod and guide bar are removed. A small oscillating saw is used to make the radial osteotomy. To complete the cut through the volar cortex, the cutting block may have to be removed. The cutting block and K wires are removed. The alignment rod is reinserted into the hole in the radius. The proper size brooch head is inserted into the brooch handle to the position for either standard or minimal broaching. The brooch is slid over the alignment rod and its ulnar face is aligned generally parallel to the sigmoid notch of the radius. Using a mallet, the brooch is driven into the distal radius until its collar is flush with the cut surface of the radius. The brooch and alignment rod are removed. A trial radial component is inserted using the impactor with care to maintain proper alignment within the prepared metaphysis. The extractor tool is applied and the trial removed. The carpus is also resected in a minimal fashion, with the line of the osteotomy passing through the proximal aspect of the capitate, preserving substantial portions of the scaphoid and triquetrum. The lunate is excised by sharp dissection or rongeur. If the scaphoid and triquetrum are mobile, carpus preparation is facilitated by temporarily pinning these bones to the capitate and hamate. K wires are inserted through their distal portions just beneath the dorsal cortices to avoid interfering with the osteotomy and insertion of the carpal component. Use of the drill guide plate is optional. When used, the plate corresponding to the selected implant size is inserted into the modular drill guide. In applying the drill guide, the guide plate rests on the dorsum of the capitate. The barrel is pressed against the capitate head and the saddle is placed onto the third metacarpal shaft over the skin. 
The sleeve for the guide wire is inserted in the drill guide barrel. The 1.4 millimeter guide wire is drilled through the capitate and into the third metacarpal. The sleeve and drill guide are removed sequentially. The 3.5 millimeter cannulated drill for the minimal hole or the 4.5 millimeter cannulated drill for the standard hole is placed over the guide wire and a hole is made in the capitate to the proper depth corresponding to the appropriate implant size. The appropriate carpal guide bar for either a standard or minimal hole diameter is inserted into the capitate drill hole. The carpal cutting block guide is mounted onto the guide bar and slid into proper position. It should guide the saw cut through the proximal one millimeter of the hamate, which will pass through the capitate head, scaphoid waist, and mid triquetrum. While the cutting block is held aligned with the dorsal surface of the carpus, two to four 1.1 millimeter K wires are inserted through the holes in the cutting block and drilled into the carpus. The K wires are cut a few millimeters above the cutting block. The position of the cutting block is checked for proper level of resection and to confirm that the cut will be made generally perpendicular to the third metacarpal shaft. A small oscillating saw is used to make the carpal osteotomy. To complete the cut through the volar cortices, the cutting block may have to be removed, but the K-wire should be retained. Once the osteotomy is completed, the countersink is used to enlarge the opening of the hole to accommodate the shoulder of the implant stem. A trial carpal component is inserted into the capitate hole and its dorsal edge is aligned with the dorsal surface of the carpus. The modular drill guide is applied with its barrel in the radial hole of the component and its saddle on the second metacarpal shaft over the skin. A 2.5 millimeter hole is drilled across the scaphoid, trapezoid, and second CMC joint to accommodate the length of a 30 to 35 millimeter screw. A 4.0 millimeter self-tapping trial screw is inserted, but not firmly tightened. A similar technique is used for the ulnar trial screw insertion, with a few important differences. The saddle is placed on the fourth metacarpal shaft over the skin, and the fourth metacarpal must be held elevated while drilling to ensure the hole is centered within the hamate and not directed volarly. The hole is drilled across the triquetrum and into the hamate, but does not cross the mobile fourth CMC joint. Its length is typically 20 millimeters, but a small wrist may accommodate only 15 millimeters. A 4.0 millimeter self-tapping trial screw is inserted, but not firmly tightened. Its depth is typically 20 millimeters, but a small wrist may accommodate only 15 millimeters. The radial trial component is reinserted. A trial polyethylene carpal component is applied to the carpal plate. Beginning with the standard thickness, the prosthesis is reduced and range of motion and stability are checked. The prosthesis is typically quite stable and should demonstrate approximately 35 degrees of flexion and 35 degrees of extension with modest tightness at full extension. If the joint is unstable and the volar capsule is intact, a thicker polyethylene component may be required to increase soft tissue tension and joint stability. A mild dorsal instability should respond to capsule closure, but a thicker polyethylene is considered for marked instability. Remove the trial components. Three sutures of 2O polyester are placed through small bone holes along the dorsal rim of the distal radius and ulna for later capsule closure. When indicated by the surgeon, bone cement is prepared in the usual manner and injected into the cavities for the carpal and radial component stems just prior to final implantation. Using the carpal plate impactor, the stem of the actual carpal component is driven into the capitate hole. Insert the true radial and ulnar 4.5 millimeter screws and tighten firmly. Remove any remaining K wires from the carpus. Using the radial impactor, the true radial component is driven into the metaphysis with care to maintain proper alignment. Apply the trial polyethylene to confirm the proper size. Using the impactor, the true polyethylene component is snapped onto the plate with firm mallet taps. Confirm the polyethylene component is completely engaged onto the carpal plate. 
Remove any remaining K wires from the carpus. The intercarpal articular surfaces of the triquetrum, hamate, capitate, scaphoid, and trapezoid are removed using a curette or burr. Cancellous chips from previously resected bone are packed into the spaces. The dorsal capsule is reattached to the distal margin of the radius using the previously placed sutures. The capsule is reapproximated at the distal radial ulnar joint or attached to the ulnar neck using the previously placed sutures if the head was resected. The medial and lateral aspects of the capsule are also closed. If the capsule is insufficient for closure with the wrist flexed 30 degrees, the extensor retinaculum is divided in line with its fibers and one half is placed under the tendons to augment the capsule. The entire prosthesis must be covered to achieve its proper stability and function to avoid extensor tendon irritation. The remaining extensor retinaculum is repaired over the tendons to prevent bowstringing. However, the EPL, ECRB, and ECRL are typically left superficial to the retinaculum. If necessary to maintain the ECU dorsally over the ulna, a separate sling for the tendon is made from the retinaculum. This presentation was created by KMI to assist you in properly performing the Universal 2 Total Wrist Implant System.